Welcome to Scrapbook Live. I'm Megan Jacks. Today is March 15th, 2023. I like to put those years in there because eventually at some point, I'm going to be broadcasting in March of 2024, right? So put those year dates in there. It's always important to have that. So um, today's project is a gorgeous one from the Creative Memories blog. If you guys, I, I say it every week, right? You've got to be following the blog. You've got to be having those um, emails come into you. Check out what they have. Um, hopefully you're seeing through these lives that the projects don't have to be specific to the um, tools or the, pro uh, the collections that Creative Memories is using. You can use your own supplies and make it work for you. So I go through and pick ones that I like, that interest me, that I think um, share a technique that I want to make sure you all know how to use, or um, that I want to personally have that page in my scrapbook. And this is definitely one of those ones where I love the technique. I love the tool that we're using. The decorative trimmer is one of my favorites. And of course, this page is just absolutely gorgeous. So kudos to Chris Lynn. She did a fantastic job designing this. Um, and I want one for my page or for my books. So we're going to put it together today. I know many of you may have already done this layout, um, or maybe you're trying it for the first time. So um, have some scratch paper available, some scrap paper that you can practice using the decorative trimmer, especially if you're not super confident with your decorative trimmer. This is going to be one you'll want to have some, just some extra cardstock or something that you can practice these cuts with. And then you'll feel more confident when you're working with your designer paper. So for um, the little bit of the housekeeping here, if you need today's handout, it's on my blog. You can see the link to it below. I copy paste it into a um, document to make it printable for you guys, but it is the directions taken from the Creative Memories blog. If you need to go to the original blog, if sometimes there's a few more photos, I don't think this one necessarily had any more photos um, for the technique itself, but you can always come up here to the QR code, go directly to the Facebook, um, the blog for Creative Memories. It'll take you to this article on the Facebook or the Creative Memories blog and have that ready for you guys. Um, hopefully you've had a chance to print this out. If you need to take any notes, um, but I think we're ready to get going, right? Okay, so I'm gonna switch over to my tabletop and I'm gonna show you what I've got. All right, so I've got my directions, right? Definitely need those. I have got some photos. Now I went clear back to 2006 for these photos. This is my middle child, my mini me when they were um, about three months old. Yeah, three months old. They were born at the end of uh, July. So I, um, Halloween, they would have been three months. And as you do, when you have, you know, multiple kids, my oldest was born in the middle of August. So this is the same Halloween costume that, uh, their older brother wore. Then when Cody came around, he was born in November. So he couldn't wear this. I was actually disappointed. Right. So you get, Oh, how cute have all three kids in the same um, costume, but that didn't work out. But I have these photos and I was, I thought they were fun. Um, they're cute. I had three of them that worked perfect for this layout it came down now to what was I going to use for papers. Now I love Halloween papers. I, I would hoard them all I could. I love the new happy honeys. You guys saw me using it a ton over this weekend doing virtual crop. I did power hour with it. Um, but that wasn't the right feeling for these photos. The orange in here is a little bit more bright. Um, I wanted something a little bit more fun, I guess. Um, whereas happy hauntings just seem to be a little too, I don't know. I don't want to say I loved these colors. These are a mixture of papers from, I believe, Wicked Cute. And we had a theme pack called Carving Memories um, that came out. They kind of went together. It had a lot of those brighter colors in it. It maybe feels a little more kid-like, fun and festive for Halloween. Whereas um, Happy Hauntings did really go with that, that kind of that haunted, um, had that more of that mature vibe to it. I wanted something a little bit more uh, kid-friendly. And so that's where I have with these. So I've got a mixture of papers here. I love the color arrangement. Um, the bright colors are going to be great. It's going to look wonderful with this technique. All of these lovely colors you go in there, but don't be afraid if you do not have, um, you've only got three or four colors or just one or two colors. You can really make this technique work with a lot of colors of paper or just a few. So one of the things we're going to need, obviously you're going to need your decorative trimmer. You're going to need some adhesive. We're going to be working a lot with the repositionable adhesive. That's the green one. 
And I have a ruler and a pencil. I don't know if I'm going to need them, but I always have those close by just in case. Um, and you're going to want to have your mat available and um, your regular trimmer, all those fun things. If they use a corner rounder in the layout itself to corner around their photos, you can do that if you want. So I've got my papers picked out. These, um, these, I have, I think six, they asked for six different patterns. I think I do have six if I factor in this stripe, six papers. I am gonna be using black shimmer paper to make, where you see the white lines here, I'm gonna be using black shimmer paper. So I'm gonna be using a little bit of a darker color. And my background paper, is gonna be this grid paper. This is from the Wicked Cute. The opposite side is the icons on the diamonds. Um, I just like that it was neutral. It's got the teal lines in it. It's pretty light and airy. Gonna keep this a very um, light and airy um, layout so that we're not going too dark with the, um, the overall feeling of the layout. So I, after playing around with this, I decided I am 99% sure that this polka dot pattern is going to be my two inch piece on the side. You can see here that is actually in step one. They want us to use our base paper and then to cut a two inch strip, they use the stripes from the painted um, garden. I am gonna be using the polka dot. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a cut and I'm gonna adhere it into place because that two inch strip is gonna help us with alignment of the rest of these pieces. So there's two inches. Bring up my cutting mat. I think for this one, I am gonna go ahead and tack my paper in place. I just put a little bit of repositional adhesive on the back. I'm gonna tack this into place. That way, as I start aligning strips here, or the individual pieces um, that I can easily come in and make sure if I need to use my ruler to make some lines or whatever I need to do, I've got, this isn't gonna shift around on me. I don't always do it, but I thought I would do it this time. And I'll go ahead and put this piece into place. Um, I'm gonna use, I'm using just a little bit of the regular adhesive here. And I'm just lining this up and apparently I cut this at two and a quarter. So I'm gonna come back in here and cut off that quarter inch. I don't need it to be two and a quarter. I want it to be two inches. There we go, two inches. As I put this down, I will double check that it lines up at two inches because if I am using this straight line to line up my border, I wanna make sure that this is straight. So I am defaulting to this edge going from two inches. It actually it says 10 up here at the top, but that's two inches from the left edge at the top and the bottom. Two inches from the left edge at the top and the bottom. Okay. So now we've got that part done. We've got our background kind of set, ready to go. Now it's time to use our decorative trimmer with all of those colors of papers that we've picked out. Um, like I said, though, you may only have one or two colors. The biggest thing you're gonna want here is you're gonna want to make six strips or so, six to seven strips. Really what we're looking for is we want, I believe it's 18 of these, um, shapes here. So we we'll just count them real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. You need 18 of the full shapes, plus you need four half shapes. All right. So 18. I can tell you when we cut it based on the directions, we're going to get a piece that looks like this. And we can see here, I've got one, two, three full shapes. That means when I have six of those, I'll have 18 of these pieces. That's what you're looking for is 18 of these pieces. So let's go ahead and cut them. I have a bunch already cut. 
but I will walk you through how to cut them. So you're gonna start off, I'm gonna grab this stripe paper. I need to make uh, mine with the striped paper. And as I said, you guys will want to, if you're just doing this for the first time, I would not necessarily say cut this with your best paper. You might want to use some cardstock first, some scrap uh, paper, something that you don't care if you mess up. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to feed my paper in from the um, right to the left. I think that's Sometimes I think that that can be a little bit of a, um, my recommendation on when you're using and writing directions using the decorative trimmer, you kind of sometimes need to say whether you're feeding from the right or feeding from the left, which also then makes you said, well, what direction are you holding your decorative trimmer? So the decorative trimmer to me, normally when I work with it, I will have it so that my arm is up here on the upper left. All right, so for this particular layout, you're gonna to wanna to feed in from the right to the left. So I'm gonna do that. And all I'm gonna do is I do want to center top to bottom. Remember, the decorative trimmer, the trimmer bed itself is 12 and a half inches. So I need to come down one, a quarter inch from the top, come up from the bottom a quarter inch. Thankfully, that is one of these squares. So you can see here, I have my decorative trimmer marked. I used a thin tip Sharpie and marked that. That reminds me if I'm gonna center my paper in my decorative trimmer bed, that that's where I do it, all right? So I'm gonna be paying a lot of attention, making sure that I line up and I will be defaulting to the bottom edge is where I'm going to make sure that I'm lining up every single time. Uh, the top edge should theoretically be lined up as well, but if I line up, you can see I've got those marks at the bottom as well. Feed my paper in. And the first thing I need to do is I need to establish the cut. I need to establish that wave. And just as a quick reminder, this edge here is our swell edge. This edge here is the wave. The, uh, where we have more frequency of the ups and the downs, that's our wavy edge. Here you can see we only have um, you know, one, we have two um, troughs, one um, peak here. So that's the, um, the difference between the two. So we're working with the wave. I've got it in here far enough. I'm gonna go ahead and trim. I'm establishing that edge. Now, the easiest way to do this is just gonna be to flip it over right to left. So now I'm working on the back side, and now I'm gonna feed it in from the left towards the right. And the measurements or the directions say you're gonna take that, um, the low edge, the trough of your wave, which is the, this trough, it's gonna line up at one and a half. Now, the decorative trimmer has rulers like everywhere. And to understand where that is, here's the one. You can barely see it. There's the one. One and a half is back over here. So I know it doesn't seem you're not one and a half inches from the edge. You're at one and a half because there's two. There's one. In the middle is one and a half. So you're going to find that edge. And you're going to see, look, it is super, super close to the peak. We're going for that hourglass cut. So I'm gonna take my trough, my low edge, and come right up to that one and a half inch. And what I'm gonna see is you're gonna see that you're barely going to be cutting. It's gonna be, you're gonna have real thin spots. I'm lining up here at the bottom, making sure I'm staying at that quarter edge, quarter inch from the um, bottom. I've got that lined up. That's gonna give me nice equal pieces. Take the time, make sure you get your measurements there. If you're working with scratch paper, just to get a feel for how this is going to work. And then I'll cut. So there we can see. Now, if you're using the same piece of paper and you're going to cut multiple with it, I cut six different pieces of paper. 
So I was able to basically repeat what I just showed you six times to get my six pieces of paper. If you are not using six pieces or maybe you're using the opposite side to your papers, you could once again, take this edge, flip it back over. And for this one, you're gonna feed it in and you don't have the measurements here, but the goal is really, you wanna just get it far enough over that you can see, I think you actually line it up at two and a half. It looks like just past the two and a half should get you what you want, which is the nice fat hourglass with a thin space between them. And this is where you practice a little bit. And you can see there, the goal is we want to try to keep these, um, the troughs nice and tight to each other. We don't want it falling apart necessarily. We want to keep it nice and tight. That's going to allow us to, when we put everything together, that the um, internal, um, where that trough comes together and our um, little strips meet, they can overlap nicely and we'll have very uh, specifically separated pieces in the border. Okay. So I'm going to move on to the next step. You may or may not be ready to do that. Like I said, I have already got my six pieces. So this is just for the interest of keeping this video going. I've got my six done. I'm going to start cutting them apart. Before I do that though, I am going to go ahead and show you how to cut your thin strips. So here we've got the black shimmer paper. Um, so I see, I do see a comment saying that when you do the one and a half, it's cutting incorrectly. So let me, I'm going to walk you guys through that one more time with the original way we did it. And I'll just go ahead and do it here with the black. I've got my straight edge. I'm going to feed in from the right to the left and I'm establishing my wavy edge. That's the first thing you got to do here. You got to establish that wavy edge. Okay. I've established my wavy edge. Now what I'll need to do is I'll flip my paper over right to left. The big thing here is to know where your one and a half inch is. And let me see. One and a half. Here's the one. It's all measured off of the swell, but we're not using the swell. We're using the wavy, but here's one. It's one inch. It's actually one inch from, um, because here's two and one. You're going to line up right here on that edge. That's where your trough is going to line up. So when I line my paper up, I am bringing this trough. You, there's my cut line. There's my measurement line. I'm going to bring that trough right to that edge. I just barely covered it. That should give you then your sweat, your hourglass. You have to make sure though, that I originally cut it from this way. When I put it in, I have to flip it right to left and slide it in from the other side to get me that hourglass effect. If you're not getting the hourglass, that means you need to flip the paper over right to left to get you that hourglass. Hopefully that helps. All right. So here, I'll show you on this. I will come in, lining that up. I can barely see that line just past my cut. Lining all of my troughs up the low edge at that line. So here's right there, right there, here, and finally there, and cut that piece. All right, so hopefully that's able to get you guys going. Keep practicing if you need to. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to make all of those thin strips. You need a total of six of the thin strips. And this comes down into, yes, so the six strips, about an eighth of an inch wide. So what I ended up doing is still feeding in from the right or from the left 
to the right. So I slide in from here. I've already got my wave established. If you need to, you can establish a new wave. Depending on your paper, you may or may not have the wave established. I've already got it established. If you've got a straight edge, feed it in from the right, or excuse me, from the left to the right. And what you do is you cut your edge and then we're gonna push out to that same one and a half inch line. So that same line we use to cut the, uh, the trough of the hourglass, we're gonna use with our, the peak or the crest of our wave. And I'm gonna push it out to that same spot. I wanna make sure I measure it here at the bottom or I'm up so that they're nice and centered pieces and then I'll cut. And you're gonna come up with some pretty thin pieces. And you'll need six of them. So you just keep cutting, measuring that the peak, the crest of your wave is at that one and a half inch mark. And you'll make, you need six of those. I've already got a bunch cut. I wanted to make sure I took plenty of time to measure them, make sure they were all as even as possible. This is another area where your consistency and your cuts is what helps make the finished um, product look really nice and sleek, a very polished um, a result here. So practice. If you need to make eight of them so that you can get six that are as uniform as possible, it's well worth a little bit of extra paper to do that. All right, so after this, now it's just a matter of starting to put all these pieces together. All right, so what we're gonna do is I've got my six pieces here. And when I start, I'm gonna, I need to cut them apart. So you're gonna need a pair of scissors. And you wanna cut them in half between the swells. Or, so you leave your swells together, you're gonna cut in the troughs. And just cut all those pieces apart. You need 18 total, plus those half pieces. So however you get to your 18. And I was gonna use the candy corn side of that. I think that's fun. And just cut these all, I'm leaving them so I'll be able to grab the pieces I want. I'm really kind of hoping with our, if we get another Halloween set that we go back to kind of these, these fun colors. Again, I love the oranges and the yellows and the purples and the blacks and the aquas. I think it's just a really pretty, it's fun and festive. So what I'm gonna do when I put these down, I am gonna start and I'm gonna use this straight line here to put these pieces to, down. Now I wanna make sure that my swells, my pieces line up so I can use one of these to help me. I may have some overlaps to get my frequency in, in, in place. Frequency is the number of times that the wave pattern um, goes per 
I don't know, I'm trying to remember. I can't remember. We talked, we talked about it in physics. It's been a long time since I've had physics. So there we go. That's So I'm going to make an admission. I know that there was a video made by the designer of this particular layout. I am also going to tell you I did not watch it. So if that designer has great ideas on how to put this together, you may want to follow that. I don't watch videos. <laughs> um, I think once you get the first row in, the second row is going to be easy because we've established it. We've established our wave. You could use your full pieces if you want. So there we go. Now when I put these pieces in, all I have to do is lay them into my swells. So this will come in here. That piece could maybe go there. And if I've got a half a bat, can come up here at the top. Oops. I see where I made some mistakes though. The first, the first one is always going to be the hardest. The first line is always going to be the hardest to put in. There we go. <laughs> I appreciate you guys that follow along with my lives. It's always definitely appreciated. I have fun putting these layouts together and I figured it's always fun to share them with you. If I'm going to sit down and put the project together, why not make a video with it, right? You can see these second ones are going in a little bit faster because I've got that, that first line established. It's like when you're tiling something, you've got to have the first line established. I'm going to actually pull this piece out and I'm going to put in the bats. Let's see here. And I just keep working it, trying to get pieces spread out. So just working here to see how do I want my pieces. I think it's okay to have those two next to each other. So just figuring out where you want your pieces. 
I, I can come in on this side here and do, let's see. Very exciting. I think my two day, my two day order I think has arrived. I'm super excited. So that's gonna have all of the new on the farm materials in it. So that's exciting. Uh, the black I'm gonna overlay on top. And I might need to go ahead and cut some pieces, some more pieces, probably because I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't space them out. I think I probably should have done a dry fit. And since I've got this same piece here, I'm gonna come in and cut my piece apart there. This will come in at the bottom. The black, I'm gonna overlay on top. The black strips, I will be placing those on top. So one thing I need to do though, is I'm going to come in here and determine, see, I've got a, I've got kind of a stopping point here. I could add still another row. I'm going to have to cut some pieces to make this work, but I've got photos I need to stick on here, right? So how much of this is going to take up? Am I going to start covering up those photos or covering up this with my photos? So here's my photos. And I know I want them laid out about like that. So I'm actually, I'm gonna stop with just, I think the two, if I put another one, I'm gonna put it on this side, but I think I'm actually gonna be okay right there. So I just need to fill in these pieces. And I need a piece up here at the top. Yep. There we go. Okay, so I am dialing it back. They use one more row. I am just using a total of four rows here. Gives myself a little bit more space over here. If I wanted to come in with that fifth row, I could. So now it's a matter of putting on those swell or the wave pieces that we cut, the thin waves. So I'm going to bring up my mat here. This is the blue, that silicone mat. And I'm going to use my repositionable adhesive and I'm going to come along here. and put this on. So now come here, start here at the bottom and I'm gonna just lay it on. It should follow my edge. The thin pieces are a little bit bendable. So you will have the ability to get it to mold to that edge. Now the next piece I put on, I gotta make sure that I put adhesive on the right side. All right, so this is the direction it's gonna go. Pull it off, flip it over. I'm being a little generous with my adhesive. I wanna make sure it's gonna stick and it's gonna follow that edge. 
and I, well, I want it to meet in the middle and overlap a little, but they need to at least touch. You've got some flexibility in that, that eighth inch strip, okay? It, I was able to move it around a little bit here at the bottom to get it to go into place. And then my next one. I'm gonna use, one of these is a little bit, that one was pretty thin. I can tell this piece, yeah, a little bit of a thicker piece there. So you can see how it's coming together, really making them pop off the page. Two more pieces to put on. If you are finding that you're not overlapping or you're not touching, you might wanna go in and recut your thin strips to be a little bit thicker than that eighth inch. I probably needed to do that based on kind of what I'm seeing here. I've got some areas where I'm not quite, they don't touch as much as I would like them to do. And you know me, I can be a little bit of a perfectionist. So trying to get that to touch. You can always put an embellishment there too, right? That's what embellishments are for. No mistakes, just opportunities for embellishments. And that edge is gonna come right along there nice. The black works really well here. I've got a lot of black in the background of these photos. There we go. So there's the pieces on there. Now I'm gonna quickly, well, I'll trim, I have to trim off the top and the bottom. I'll do that. Now I need to go ahead and get my photos on here. Uh, my photos, I need to mat, and I was gonna maybe mat using the yellow. I don't have a ton of the paper. And here's where I get stingy. Do I wanna use this paper to mat or do I wanna save it, right? For, um, and maybe use just cardstock to mat the photos. So this is where, or I, maybe I'll just use, I don't know, what do you guys think? The yellow or the, I also just have this, well, I don't wanna do orange. That's a lot of orange. I think I'll maybe do, let's see here. It's gonna go like this and this. I'm gonna use the plaid on one side, the yellow on the other. So I'm gonna go plaid, yellow, plaid. So my photos, I've already cropped down a little bit, but I need to crop them a little bit more. Um, so 
the photo, I'm going to go ahead. I like to crop when I can, whenever I can. I like to crop to even things like three and three quarters or five and a half or something like that. Then when I make my mats, I just cut my mats to be about a quarter inch bigger. So I need to take, I'm going to take this down to three and three quarter inch tall. And my overall width right now is just past five and a half. So I'm going to take it down to five and a half. So what I'll be able to do then is with my pencil, I took my, my photo is set to three and three quarters by five and a half. I can now add um, anywhere from a quarter of an inch to three. Um, sometimes I do the three sixteenths of an inch because I like it to be just a little bit. I'll do three eighths of an inch. So I'll come out to um, uh, about three eighths of an inch larger on both of these. So that would be um, four eighths five and seven eighths and four and one eighth by five and seven eighths mat. Just me being picky on how I want that. So we're gonna come here, shave this down just a little bit back to that three and three quarters and cut off a little bit to get to that five and a half. And then all three of my mats will be the same size. There we go. I love my personal trimmer for cutting photos. Your mileage may vary on which one, what you prefer. So I said, I need to come over here to four and one eighth inch wide, four and an eighth. By five and seven eighths, so not quite six inches. Which is great because I can get two out of that 12 inch length. I really try not to have my mats be any wider than six inches. I'll trim my photo first because I want to be able to get two mats. And now I need one more mat of that same. So four and an eighth. By five and seven eighths. Oops, let's see here. So there goes one photo, that sassy little expression they've got on that face. And then of course, the other one here. If I need to, my mat can overlap just a little bit there if I wanna keep them separated. So lots of ways to finish out this layout, depending on your photos. Lots of ways you can orient your border if you want to, um, how you want to do it on there. You can see here I scaled it back to give myself a little bit more space here. If you want to add in that other row, I would add mine on this side here to keep it out from encroaching on my space for my photos. And I'm going to have to go through my Halloween folder. I have a, just a, a project folder full of Halloween stuff. Um, as I've worked through the various collection that creative memories has had, I, um, uh, I will just kind of dump everything into the folder. So there we go. That's going to be the layout there. I think it's super fun, super cute. I'll come in. I can do a little bit of a title over here. I do think that this is a little bit, um, has quite a bit of space to the side to it. It feels a little empty to me. So probably what I'll do is I might go ahead and just do um, the title here in bold black cut out die cut letters. And then I can have um, more of embellishments up here. That is probably the approach I'm going to take just to balance it out. I do feel like I said, there's just a little bit of a gap to this side. 
Um, if I really wanted to be adventuresome, I would go ahead and add another set of pieces over here, but I really don't want to. I like it just the way it is. Um, adding in that title is going to be perfect there. So that's that layout there, that technique. So hopefully you guys are inspired to try it. Um, if you um, want a different perspective of it, or maybe I am the different perspective if you watch the other um, the other video as well. But there's you know many, many different ways to um, to put together layouts. And so it's fun sometimes a different perspective. Um, but yes, you can do all sorts of different techniques with this. If you were to be um, doing the edge, what you could probably do, what I would actually recommend doing is um, I used that thin strip. You could take your piece of paper here. You can see we've got this actually could be our template, right? We could lay this right down on the paper, slide our pieces next to it. Um, just how I use that little thin strip, you could use something more like this would actually get you going. You could, if you really wanted to, that two inch strip that we cut there, you could cut that wavy edge um, there and get yourself a template right there on that two inch piece. So lots of ways that you can do it. Um, build the templates that allow you for that spacing because that's really where you want to take the time. Once you get the first piece in, you guys saw it goes together rather quickly. It's just that first, the first line that you need to get there. So, all right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget tomorrow morning, um, well, morning, my time early afternoon for, um, East coast. So it's 1 PM Eastern 10 AM Pacific. Tessa and I are going to be putting together the project recipe for national scrapbook day, plus all of the layouts in the project, um, booklet. So here's the project booklet. Um, there are some additional layouts and things in here. We'll be walking you through all of those. If you already have your National Scrapbook Day supplies, it's everything in the customer bundle that we're going to be putting together to, um, for you tomorrow. You can go to meganandtessa.com and you can sign up for that. It's going to be under spring classes. Um, and then you can um, put those together. It's a free class. The video will be available later in the afternoon if you can't join us live. Um, and then of course, at the end of the month, we have our painted garden project, um, excuse me, painted garden page makers workshop and our NSD card class. Those will be coming up at the end of the month. So once again, thanks for joining me today. I will have another, um, we'll have a, do this again next week. We'll have another project that we're going to be putting together and, um, that's going to be a great time. I'll have that published, ready to go sometime early, but, but sometime this weekend. All right. So everybody have a wonderful rest of the week and we will see you all soon. Thanks for watching.